Here's my five tips to creating a masterwork. If you really want to take your paintings to the next level, you'll really get something out of today's video. So before we get to that, let's go through just some of the general working things. When I'm putting my paint out, I'm making sure I get lots of paint out. I'm almost doubling, tripling the amount. I really want huge masses. As I always joke, instead of bird droppings, elephant droppings. I've got lots of room for medium, which is fantastic. Uh, definitely being able to step back, stand back as often as possible. You can even use your iPhone, photograph your painting and flip it uh, in mirror reverse or even upside down. Just gives you a fresh look at compositional things. You're not too worried about detail early on. So that's a huge help. Uh, then we go on to the mediums. Uh, I used to always use the, my standard fast drying medium thinking, well, it doesn't normally dry in a day, so I'll have plenty of time but I found it was just tacking off after six or eight hours where I was then getting into trouble where if I needed to rework an area, that's when I really started to struggle. So now I've gone for odorless classic medium, which gives me about two, pretty well three days before it's fully dry. So that allows me to come back the next day and rework or touch or smudge or blur or sharpen something up. I'm able to work wet in wet for me, which is really, really a, an important idea because ultimately I want to get the paint down in one layer or as much of the paint down in one layer. Uh, a little bit like when you're laying uh, floor tiles, you don't really want to be stacking floor tiles up layer after layer. And the same with paint. So let's get on to the tips. Tip number one, even though I've got a really great screen, 5K, it's an old Mac. Uh, the other beauty is when I'm getting to the really fine nitty gritty details, say wanting to see what's happening with the bridge uh, in this particular scene uh, or the buildings or a lot of times it's not so much actually what's there, it's what's um, subdued, what I don't need as well. So that's why it is super important to be able to, for me especially, to be able to visually see what is happening, what's going on. And especially as we come down to the foreground, every good painting needs a good foreground and this definitely is absolutely imperative with a big painting is to be able to physically see what you need to paint. So that for me is quite a revolutionary idea uh, instead of having to, even though sometimes I will sort of zoom in with the iPad, but this is so much better. So that's really been a game changer for me. The other one is, is doing a little study, is doing just that little painting. Uh, I may spend about two hours uh, so when I painted this one, I started about 9 in the morning. I was ready to go on the big one by about 11. And then I think I worked about 10, 10.30 at night on the bigger painting. But these are just a great little process. And I'm sort of thinking to myself, you know, if it doesn't work, it doesn't matter. It's more about just getting uh, warmed up, just getting into the flow of things, uh, thinking correctly. And that's why I actually like doing either a little still life or something like this that does require a certain amount of accuracy, a certain amount of um, control, but also it gets me in the thought process of all painting, but especially on a day like this, that's when I really need to be thinking technique. Technique is really gonna hold me in good stead. Um, but then when I'm blocking in, I'll use a big brush to get those big shapes, those big areas uh, in fast, and uh, knowing that, you know what, even in little paintings, I can do things wrong. And don't be scared, you know what, boy, that didn't work. Scrape it off. But what I do like to do is, in some of the lighter areas, because the white light paint dries a lot slower, I'll actually just come in and just smudge back almost to the board, just leaving enough for the uh, value to work, uh, but no more. Um, because they're the areas that uh, will even after three days, sometimes they're still a little touch dry or, or not quite uh, fully dry. So that's a really super important little one that I think has really helped my overall painting, but especially on the big paintings. Um, one of the number one things that most oil painters do is put the paint on too thick to start. Uh, I love wet in wet and the true secret with oil painting is learning how to paint uh, uh, with a wet underpainting and still be able to come over it. it does take a really nice touch, a lot of paint in the brush as well. Uh, that is super important, absolutely. And one of the 
next tips are is to take some regular breaks. Grab a little painting that you have finished. Um, this is tip number five, that you will just grab it, do five minutes, 10 minutes, uh, because when you're thinking 10 hours, five, 10 minutes, if I do it three, maybe even four times, that really is only say 20 minutes in the overall day. And it really sort of, for me, it resets my mind after just staring and looking at the same space. Um, uh, and you always have areas that you're uncertain of. So this is a great way just to reset what I'm thinking, what I'm looking at and what I'm doing. So I think it's time to have a look at the big painting. So we have our study here, which is a 16 by 12. That's a pretty good size to be able to um, fish out and flush out any of the, the worries. So that's a really marvelous size to be able to um, sort out what may go wrong, what can go wrong, even though I do know that I'm going to need to add to it, expand to it, where one of the key things were that I realized, and I was almost 80% of the way through, and it dawned on me from the study to the big painting, these, well, those two boats weren't big enough. They weren't holding the eye to carry through to the, the next big shape. So I have my primary focal point, secondary and tertiary over area over here. And uh, typically, as I said, with composition, we're going to need to um, add more, bring more. Um, so that was one of the little key things. And I brought in another boat there. So it just shows you how important it is to uh, be able to, to be adaptive and to be able to change and go with the way that things are going. So once I've done all that, uh, I'll then have a hopefully a good night's sleep and pray that the painting was as good as you hoped it was or you thought it, you got it, uh, and then you don't have too much work the next day. Then I'll come in and uh, refine some areas and uh, just fine tune. And a lot of times it's actually taking stuff out, not actually adding more. Uh, it's so easy to overload with boats um, or, or details. There's just a suggestion of a few little pigeons there and uh, the wave. Um, I did actually get a few reference photos of the same subject with this boat further out. And sometimes that can be helpful as well because uh, you can sometimes not quite understand the drawing uh, with a, uh, an image. It can be a bit of an illusion, so that's why it doesn't hurt to have a couple of images of the same um, scene, and that can help us out hugely. But um, be patient, uh, be prepared to try and fail. I certainly have done my share, and um, and even ask other artists for uh, a bit of advice. Um, an artist friend, Joe Paquette, I uh, just queried him as to his uh, drawing medium, and that's when I realised that was my little... Uh, obstacle that I just could not get over was that drawing time. Uh, even though I'm a relatively fast painter, especially when I'm uh, got a lot of painting behind me, and that's another good trick is to, and I'll finish with this one, folks, is to make sure you're painting well. Don't sort of think, okay, first painting of the the week, the month, of the year, of the new year, I'm going to do a big painting. I'll normally do between one and three months of painting before. I've one, collected enough studies to be ready to do the big painting, but also have that mental, physical conditioning there as well. And I think that's one thing that most people sort of forget. We need to be physically conditioned, but mentally tough as well. Because as they say, when the going gets tough, the tough have to really get going. So hope this has helped. All the best. Bye for now.